Hey there and welcome back to this course on learning how to deploy dockerized applications to AWS Elastic Beanstalk. In the last video we wrote a docker file to dockerize a react application but we noticed at the end of the video that hot reloading was just not working. In this video in an attempt to fix it we will be using a new service called docker compose and use something called docker volumes with it. So back inside the workspace um, you can notice that I've created a new file called docker-compose.yml just next to my React app which is called the Beanstalk app. So this docker composer yml again has a very strict syntax so we can quickly run through it and understand this in good detail. So the first command says that we're using the most recent version of docker compose version 3.8 as of recording this video. Then Let's just focus on what an actual use case of a docker composer YML file is. So in any real world project, we basically have a Node.js server, a React application or any server and any frontend application, both of them running together. And oftentimes when we run those projects locally, we want, we have to start uh, a container that runs our server. Then we have to start a container that runs our frontend and then we have to make sure that both those docker containers can communicate with each other. Well, here's where docker composite YML comes in. It makes sure that everything we mention under the services is shared across a common network and they can communicate with each other. So at this point, we only have one React tab, but we could very easily have a Node.js server, an Nginx file, a MongoDB server, SQL database, or a Redis server inside the services and whenever I start my Docker Compose, all of these services would start up just together and every service would be provided with what it needs. For example, all the required environment configurations so that everything works perfectly. For our use case right now, we just have one service, but very soon we, we will be adding one more. So back inside our services, we have something called React App. And this is just a service name I have given. You could name it anything you want. Inside that, we first have the build command, which first has docker file. So we say that build a docker file whose name is docker file. And obviously, as you can see, um, this is not very useful because by default, docker file is always called docker file. But I just wanted to mention this since in case you have a docker file with a different name so that you can mention it here. So if you have docker file dot prod or docker file dot def, you can mention it this here. Then we have a context. This is actually the context of where our application exists. So in, in this case, our React application exists inside this Beanstalk app directory. So I've given this context. Um, and everything, every time we start Docker Compose up, it would try to build Docker file inside this context. Next up, we have volumes. For volumes, the tricky part is volumes in our scenario are introduced to solve one purpose so that we have that hot reloading feature. So let's see how it works. I say on line number nine, we'll get to line number eight next, that our Beanstalk app should be used as a volume and then anything inside our Beanstalk, Beanstalk app should be provided in real time inside the USR SRC app directory inside the Docker container. What this means is from the last video, we remember that everything in our react application is running inside this directory inside that same directory in real time. I am providing everything that's present inside the Beanstalk app. What this would mean is if I were to make any changes in any of my files and then I were to save those, those would in real time be reflect reflected inside the Docker container, which basically returns us that functionality of hot reloading. So that's how it works. Finally, port mapping. We already know that we were exposing port 3000, but before we explicitly had to run, write docker run and do a port mapping with hyphen P command. In this case, we don't need to do that. We can just say map port 3000 inside the container to port 3000 in the real world. So just to test this, I'll close down my already running react server. And once it successfully sh shuts down, the way to start a Docker Compose file is to run Docker Compose up with hyphen hyphen build. 
this would make sure that we first build a react application in our case i had just done this before the video so it should happen really quickly and once it builds it it would actually build bring our application up and everything should work as expected so let's just take one moment to let it build boom it's done and we see that it's already has brought up a react app server so if i go back and i refresh i see that everything is working as just as expected back inside of here if i change anything for example if i add a few exclamation marks before environment and save this and i go go back now i see that in real time those changes are being reflected inside of my react application so we basically got the functionality of that hot reload bug by using docker volumes that's it for this video in the next video we'll be setting up nginx configuration so that we have a another service that we can add inside our docker compose file and see how the services play together and b also learn the basics of nginx see you then